Well, hi everyone, greetings and good afternoon to all. Uh, thank you for accepting our invitation for this webinar titled Redesigning the Ultimate Student Onboarding Experience. Today we have the pleasure to have Indra Paola Pelaez. She is the Associate Vice Chancellor of Enrollment, Management and Success at Houston Community College, one of our member institutions in Texas. So that today we have more than 90 people registered, uh, participants from institutions in Puerto Rico, and also we have from the U.S. like Board of Manhattan Community College, College of mm. Staten Island. We also have from Hostos Community College, La Guardia Community College, Sacramento State in California. So good morning for you because you are in the West Coast. Um, because of the time change, uh, everybody is in different time. We also have from California State University in San Bernardino. Good morning for you as well. And we also have from University at Albany, Eastern State Con uh, Connecticut University. Uh, and we also have from New Mexico State University and Palm Beach State College. Hi, Eileen. She's always with us. Thank you for following us and always be there. Uh, Greeting to all, we hope that this webinar will be of great benefit from everyone. So far we have more than 40 people uh, live and we hope that the rest can uh, can enter uh, very soon. But we always remember uh, to everyone, especially the ones that this is the first time that its priority and commitment is to support and serve our more than 40 member institutions in Puerto Rico, Latin America, and the United States, and other institutions who participate and are invited to, to join us of these webinars uh, as well. And we also have uh, teachers from the K-12 uh, education system, either private or public here in Puerto Rico, and from others as well. So welcome to everyone. Today's webinar will uh, during this webinar, Indra will share how the Registration Redesign Task Force identified challenges in the current admissions and registration process and provide recommendations for eliminating the challenges and or implementing enhancements. Uh, as a result, in April 2019, a new and improved admissions application was launched uh, since prior to the implementation uh, of the online application, uh, continuing education students, adult uh, education, and international students were required to submit a paper application. So today we're going to learn how to transform and redesign this experience for the students, for the benefit of the students. Before we begin today's uh, topic, we invite you to use the chat uh, to write your questions or doubts since our interest is that you clarify any uh, uh, information that uh, Indra will be sharing with us today. We ask you to keep your microphones mute to avoid interruptions as the, this webinar is being recorded uh, for the reference of you and also to share uh, through our social media and in our website uh, the link to others that could not join us live. Uh, today. The recording, as you may know, can be found in the same page where the, where you register in the next 24 hours, usually. Uh, we also remind you that in the next event section of our homepage, heads.org, you can find all the topics that we will be offering during this semester in English and Spanish. And we invite you to register to separate your space and participate. The rest of the webinars that we will be having in, in November and December are totally free of charge. And the next one's going to be in Spanish. Eh, and we're going to share El Modelo Multistratégico para la Enseñanza Efectiva en Línea. De, eh, and that will be presented by his author, Dr. Jose Ferrer López, that he has been with us before. He, is the uh, education uh, the director or catedrático asociado de uh, continuing education and distance learning at the recinto uh, metro uh, Mayagüez campus of the University of Puerto Rico. This will be at three 
p.m. Uh, because since he is from Puerto Rico, we decide to leave the same hour that we usually are, are used to, 3 p.m. in the case of Indra, since she's in, 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 in the same in the central time, we move the hour for her convenience. But with Jose, we can uh, definitely be at 3 p.m. So next webinar going to be on November 12th, next Thursday at 3 p.m., okay? And we also have one webinar the next day, uh, November 13th. That's going to be in Spanish. And the title is Mercadea Tu Marca Personal. That will be presented by Dr. Naomi Curet Molina. She is Associate Catedrática eh, Asociada de la Escuela de Ciencias y, eh, Sociales y Humanas de Ana Geméndez en Carolina. Esto va a ser a las 10 de la mañana de 10 a 11, hora de Puerto Rico, okay, vía Zoom. Lo de los estudiantes lo hacemos vía Zoom. Pueden entrar y por favor ayudarnos, ¿verdad? Help us to promote this among their students. Your students. Finally, participants, as you may know, who are part interested in receiving the certificate of participation, please send us an email at info at heads.org. Uh, and remember to put the name, uh, your full name, uh, the date, and the title, or you can reply the link message uh, that you receive for this webinar, and then please put us, uh, please send me the certificate because we already have. Uh, know that you're talking about this webinar, but please include your full name because sometimes the email doesn't have the full name. Okay, this is very important. And mm. you will be receiving the webinar, uh, the certificate of this webinar during the next two weeks, since we always allow seven days for receiving all the emails. And then in the next week, then we'll be preparing all the certificates and will be sent. Okay, if you in two weeks you didn't receive the certificate, please follow us. Uh, send us an email and following us with us we definitely will be taking care of you remember that also you have the opportunity to receive a certificate of continuing education through the office of uh, at the inter-american university which is our host institution and this has a cost of five dollars per certificate you just need to follow the instructions below the registration form uh, for this webinar and there you have the phone and the email to request it and the link to pay, make the payment okay any questions please let us know now we are ready to start our webinar um, i am pleased to present our speaker today i already serve her name and her titles but for the ones who just join in join us uh, is Alondra Paola Peláez. She served as the Associate Vice Chancellor mm -hmm. of Enrollment Management and Success with Houston uh, Community College. And uh, Ms. Peláez is responsible for improving the Houston Community College admissions and registration experience. And her responsibilities include overseeing the acquisition of a transcript evalu evaluation software, implementation of Hobson's Intersect, platform and developing a CRM business process mapping for a common common onboarding experience for all students. Her passion is based on the belief that education is the foundation necessary for students to build and strengthen their communities, achieve their personal and professional goals and increase future economy opportunities for themselves and their families. Excellent belief, uh, Indra. Now, please wel help him welcome uh, Indra, who will be with us uh, during, during this uh, presentation. Remember, at the, uh, at the end of the presentation, uh, you can write your questions at the chat. Angelique Sami will be sharing this uh, with Indra so she can reply any questions you may have. So, adelante, Indra, uh, please uh, start your presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Yubeli, uh, for the introduction. And it is an honor and pleasure to be here with everyone from the U.S. that was mentioned and Puerto Rico. I was just reminiscing about the fact that I was supposed to go to Puerto Rico in January, and then Maria came, and other hurricanes came, and then, you know, COVID-19 arrived so a lot of things have changed so i'm, I'm glad and the that we're earthquake. and the oh, earthquake. Yes. <laughs> earthquake too many it's too many too many challenges that are along this uh year but, but I, I i appreciate the time that you're giving me to share 
the experiences and the improvements that we're making at Houston Community College. So because we have a diverse um, audience, I want to give an overview of HCC, who we are, our student population, uh, who do we service. Then I'll go into the, the admissions application redesign process, the steps that students have to, to enroll at HCC, our new, new student homepage, and our COVID-19 response. Before I start with the uh, formal topics, I want to share a little bit about myself and why the onboarding experience is so important for me. Um, I'm originally from Guatemala. Um, as uh, some of you were in the call earlier, I, uh, my dad is from Cuba, and then he lived in Guatemala. At the age of 16, I told my dad I want to go to Chicago, live with my godmother, and learn English. I'll come back and study in Guatemala. Many years later, I never went back. I stayed in Chicago for 20 years and, you know, learned English, learned, you know, the different ways to enter college. It was a challenging experience, but I was very fortunate to have mentors along the way to help me and to guide me through the process. And after 20 years, um, both as a student and employee of City Colleges of Chicago, I had the pleasure to uh, transition to Houston Community College where, you know, now I have an opportunity to make an impact for our prospective students. Uh, I want to make sure that the entrance and, you know, the admissions process is improved so that we can, you know, minimize students getting frustrated and, you know, just going somewhere else. So that's why this is important for me. So now that I share um, about me and why it's important, HCC is a diverse community college. We service over 106,000 students yearly. 40%, uh, close to 40% students are Latinos. Uh, our next big population is African American with 28%. And then you can see the, you know, number, the percentage of white and Asian students. And this is the last certified uh, enrollment data that we have for 2018-2019. So as you you know and we have a lot of first generation students students who did not have the opportunity to have parents who went to college so this is the students that we service to give you more information about hcc we're number one in serving international students we have over seven thousand students that come from many countries, uh, including Vietnam, Mexico, Nigeria, China, and India. And then we have top institutions that our students are transferring to, and we continue to work partnerships both outside the U.S. and in the U.S. to make sure that our students have uh, smooth uh, opportunities to transition to four-year universities. We have, um, you know, just typically we have more females than males enrolled at HCC. So we have 57,000 females and 45,000 uh, males. And you can see the age group. Um, the majority of our students are between 18 to 22. And we have the non-traditional that, you know, fall under the 23 to 30 year age gap and then 31 and, oh, you know, and 50. And of course we have over 50. Um, for the age and those we have special programs for senior citizens um, that are interested in returning back to school. The last thing I wanted to share is we have over 21 locations across you know Houston and, and it's very spread out. We have six main colleges and an online college so having a consistent uh, system for our students is super important to make sure that they get the same service that they have so one in one location versus the other or if they're doing it at the comfort of their home like they're doing it now for COVID-19 reasons so when we started the work for the readmissions application we wanted to look at what can we do uh, to improve the business process. We had um, paper applications, as you Belkis mentioned, we had a paper application for our continuing education population, our adult education, adult high school, and international students. And it was very hard to track students that had applied, uh, papers were getting, you know, misfiled, or we would get, you know, information, but then 
if we lost that team member, it was very hard to, you know, track that paperwork. So it was evident that we needed to make sure we had the proper um, method to get the students in. So the um, collaborative group, uh, it was a collaborative effort with different uh, expertise. We had IT, we had enrollment team, advising, um, academics, different people with different lenses give us input on what should be the best way to help students. So we did process maps. What does the student go through to get to HCC? What are the pain points and what can we do to redesign the onboarding admissions application? And I apologize for the, if you see some background, uh, you know, it's my new coworkers here walking around. Um, but, you know, they wanted to make sure, um, we wanted to make sure that we had you know, one entry point. So after we built out the process maps, we looked at, you know, all the potential students that we can get. We created the new student admissions application. The students had an opportunity to start the application and save it. Before, if they started an application and they didn't complete it, we would never know because it was a manual process. So now we have that and we can track prospective students that start an application and students that complete an application and it helps us with the funnel, like how many applicants, perspectives, how many students convert. So that's very good to know so that we know, okay, where are we lacking enrollment and how can we help enrollment grow? So from, from this, um, from the previous page, they would click and they would select their pathway. If they're a degree-seeking student, uh, Texas uh, has a common application. So if they're a degree-seeking student, they will follow the traditional Apply Texas admissions application process. And we also look at those admissions applications. We look at incomplete applications. We look at completed applications. The file, um, we re when we redesign the process, we used to get the file once a day. Now we get the file three times a day. We get it at 7 a.m., 12 a.m noon and at 3 p.m. to make sure that we have instant support for those students. So as soon as we get the admissions application, it gets um, loaded into our PeopleSoft system, and then students get a welcome email from our chancellor with their student ID number. So that's instant information that the students receive with the information of their next step. For F1 students, um, the students that are looking to apply uh, for a, a visa, those students will follow the traditional um, application that we created for our um, students. So that's not through Apply Texas, that's the one that we created. And if uh, they need to upload, um, you know, different type of documentation to get into the United, they have that capability now. Before they would scan documents, mail them in, Sometimes they would get here, sometimes they wouldn't get here, sometimes they will email them. So it was very challenging to track them. Now we have one mechanism uh, where we can download the documents through the upload uh, in PeopleSoft. Continuing education, even though it's not a large group of students, we wanted to make sure that we gave them an equitable opportunity to join the, the college experience. So these are the students that would take certificate, short-term certificate courses to get into the workforce. Again, we were able to get that, uh, you know, application set up for them, as well as adult education students that are learning English as a second language or completing their GED. Lastly, the adult high school is for those students that were missing a couple of credits. So it was a credit, a credit recovery program and it was, you know, a referral type of process. Now we have that application where the counselor, you know, can tell the student to apply and then we can communicate with the counselor and make sure that the student follows through. So this has made uh, significant progress for our enrollment and admissions process. And since, um, since we launched the new admissions application, we've had multiple number of applications come through. Um, so, you know, we can track, you know, how many completed applications, how many have application progress, and we have different communication campaigns, not just, you know, we have text message campaigns, and we can check the analytics of, you know, who, if we sent an email, who opened the email, who unsubscribed from our messages. So we want to make sure that we are um, sending messages 
that are strategic, not every every day, because we don't want the students to block us or to unsubscribe because we're sending too much information. So we, you know, we pull the data, we slice the data, and then we communicate with students based on where they are to the best of our ability. So for a semester credit student, these are um, the typical steps to enroll. There may be some variations if something comes along the way. But you submit an admissions application through Apply Texas. And we um, always encourage students to do their uh, uh, financial aid application while they're you know, working on something else. Uh, if they're under the age of 22, uh, Texas has a requirement for a meningitis record. So this is something that we had to adjust how we process that because in the past, you have to have it no matter what. It's still the law, we still comply with the law, but if the student is taking online classes, the student is exempt from that requirement during that term that he or she is only taking online classes. If the student is taking classes that are lab-based or flex campus, which require the student to come in in the college, then we would need those records uh, in order, you know, for the student to be in compliance. So that we had to adjust the programming for that so that it wouldn't stop enrollment for online-based courses. If the student has transcripts, we encourage students to submit their transcripts electronically so that, you know, we avoid um, getting mail lost we have one person right now that is going to our district office to retrieve transcripts, scan those transcripts, and then connect it to the student record. But it's a lot easier when we get it electronically. So we try to be very, um, you know, transparent with the student to let them know, please submit those transcripts electronically. And if they have test scores, we do the same thing with that. Um, so we try to use multiple measures as, you know, give students an opportunity to, you know, get placed according to what they have. And that's, you know, something that came as a result of COVID-19 and the reaction um, to help students. So that's part of the college readiness requirements. We have multiple placement options. Uh, Texas uses uh, something that's called the TSI, Texas Success Initiative Assessment. Uh, and so if the student has college, you know, ACT scores, or a college level examination program exam, we will take that as well, or an AP advanced placement exam, we will take that as well. And before um, they can enroll in classes, they take a career coach assessment that's all inside their student portal, and that's to help them decide what major they need to pursue. Because when they fill out an application, sometimes they just fill random uh, information but when they know what they when they don't know what they want and they want to make we want to make sure that they're in the right career path because financial aid will cover courses outside their career path so we always tell them please take care of the career coach with the advisor and we used to have orientation in person COVID-19 changed that so now we have orientation online where students do that at their leisure of their you know when on their own time and we, you know, we still can check career coach assessment results for the student. If the student, after doing that, is still undecided, that's when they, you know, they, they are required to meet with an advisor to, re to register for the first semester of classes. So we want to make sure that they have those intentional conversations with their advisors so that they can finish classes, finish their career path in the shortest amount of time without wasting effort, money, you know, without wasting their financial aid because they were taking other classes that were not part of their curriculum. So I mentioned the student age. Every student um, that I shared earlier, continuing education, adult education, uh, international student, semester credits, all the student type get this um, access to this student homepage. The student homepage has multiple tiles and it gives an, a, a student an opportunity to look at the information that, that they have available. For instance, the first tile is the student services seminar. As a result of COVID-19, we had to ensure the students knew what resources were available online and what resources were available in person or we're going transitioning in person since we started transitioning a few services to the colleges this semester. So we had a PowerPoint 
uh, presentation created, added a survey to know if this was uh, something that they received well or if they needed something else. And if we see that they need something else outside the presentation provided, we reach out to them. So we, um, I get this report downloaded every day and send it to the contact center so that they can do follow up with those students. And it's not something that we do sporadically. It's something intentionally every day, 6 a.m. This report is you know, run and send to um, a person to follow up with these students. Our checklist items is some of those, um, some of those items that help us with our student types. So we have two types of checklist items that our students are responsible for the, you know, completing throughout the admissions process. We have policy checklist items to help us stay in compliance. Uh, we have Title IX. Um, students have to watch a presentation and complete a, a short quiz and they have to pass within 80% or more. And we also have um, Campus Carry as part of policy um, checklist items uh, so that they are aware of the law and what are the responsibilities. Again, they have to take the quiz. A couple of two items that fall under policy are reaffirmation. If the student has been out of the system not taking classes for one whole year, then they have to reaffirm you know, a few questions uh, before they can get term activated again. And financial responsibility is making sure that they understand if financial aid doesn't cover their full tuition, they're responsible for covering the tuition and expenses. So those items will fall under the checklist items. We also have the onboarding checklist items. And you've seen uh, most of them in the previous slide, but that includes the new student orientation, career assessment, meningitis, and um, update contact information. We want to make sure that we have the up to the most up to date information because if there's an emergency on campus, we uh, we want to make sure that we can connect with the student. And most recently, we had to add another one on their other to do list, and that was COVID nineteen prevention training. Um, since we started, uh, you know offering classes in person this fall semester and we're offering some classes in the spring we wanted to make sure that our students were educated and were aware of what was needed of them in order to keep everyone safe so that's another checklist item that they'll see message center uh, is the next tile and that's where we send communication to students um, you know, regarding payment deadlines registration deadlines and anything that's happening in the semester Manage classes is where students register for courses, and before they can register for classes, they have to complete all the onboarding checklist items. For adult education and continuing ed classes, students have their own time they register for those classes. Um, and semester credit students can see their academic progress. So this is a really unique tool that we didn't have in the past, so I'm so excited to have this for our students. Academic records gives you a, a breakdown of the classes that the student has taken throughout uh, their time at HCC. And then profile has the base demographic information uh, that a student can see and, you know, including their student ID number. Financial account um, gives an, uh, an overview to the student on how much is their tuition. If it's an industry person at a district, and district is if, if they live within the boundaries of you know the tax district that we offer uh, classes at a district or out of state for international students and then if they're receiving financial aid uh, on the next tile they will see how much their award package is and they will have the opportunity to click and accept that um, the student center um, which is called classic enroll financial aid that tile is only available for students that were previously enrolled prior to the rollout of this uh, which you know any student prior to 2019 will get this tile if, if a student is applying for spring or fall 2021 they wouldn't see this because this is something uh, that was available for previous students and we kept it there as we completely transition the the old classic view of PeopleSoft to the new fluid. So that's going to go away. Um, COVID-19 just changed our timeline. So it's going away 
pretty soon. And then Eagle Resources, that's where we uploaded a lot of our how-to guides, job aids, uh, videos, you know, any resource that, you know, that we thought it was necessary for our students' mental health, every resource you can possibly think in one place. So students can see this um, under that Eagle Resource title. So you've seen how we, um, you know, how we redesigned the admissions application, the steps for students to enroll, the new student homepage, and COVID-19 was not part of our uh, original plan when we in the registration redesigned for task force, but it helped us get on, a, on our feet a lot quicker than anticipated uh, because we had already created job aids. Most of our job aids are in English right now, and um, we're slowly adding um, everything to Spanish. So it's you know taking time for me to trans you know make sure the translation makes sense. Um, and eventually, my goal is to have it in Vietnamese because that's the you know one of the top countries that we have for international students. And then the how-to videos. Um, we had zero videos when I went. Um, when I obtained this position, now we have 10 videos. And those videos have been very popular for our students. And it, it came very handy uh, during COVID-19 because students, you know, if they had a question and, you know, they were getting stuck, we don't have the same view that the student view has at this point. So my, my staff view is way different. Uh, so when I'm helping a student, I refer to those videos. You know, we try to do video chats as well, just so that I can see what the student is doing in order to assist the student. We're also in the process of acquiring our virtual campus tours uh, software so that we can get potential prospects from all over, not just Texas, but, you know, the U.S., international students. So that's something that we're working on and, you know, we're looking forward to getting that um, started. The CRM implementation. Um, we have began that CRM implementation. As you saw earlier, we have a large complex institution. So it is taking a project management team, a cross-functional uh, team uh, with different expertise, looking at our business processes, looking at where we can start. So um, the phase 1A, because there's going to be different phases for one, uh, we will have the communication um, automated processes, because a lot of the communications that we have, so there's got to be a, a manual touch. So hopefully with the new CRM uh, and in the fall of 2021, we should be able to upload our, our student, um, you know, our students should be able to upload, um, I'm sorry, the student records should be automatically uploaded to the CRM and then the CRM should be able to automatically send that communications to those prospective students, and we will be able to see the conversion rates, you know, from applicant or incomplete application to applicant to uh, a registered student. So I'm really excited about that. We have some uh, mechanisms in place right now using Tableau to check conversion rates, to check applications. We different pieces together, so it's like a big puzzle. So I'm excited that I can see everything in one space. And we're all, we continue to look at tools to process documents faster. Uh, LaserFish is something that we're looking at for our admissions documents to make sure that we can track when the document was submitted, where the document is, because if we have six colleges and the student might, might have submitted the document via a email to a person or a, you know a, an email that they saw on the website we want to be able to track where that document is that was one of the points that we discovered during the pandemic students were just sending stuff everywhere because they wanted a, a response and it took us a mo it took a moment for us to you know react and, and be at the same speed of our of our students but i think we're getting um better at it. We're not in a perfect world yet. Another um, COVID-19 response that we created was called a virtual lobby that's on our main page. And that gave us an opportunity to have one entry point for students to submit questions. So, so far, uh, since the beginning of March 13, when we went uh, re completely remotely, we've had over 50,000 students reach out 
to us via the virtual lobby. They can reach out to us using a email, just sending us an email. They can contact us through our chat uh, mechanism, through phone call. We have a contact center that we take, you know, all of our calls. And we most recently implemented the Zoom um, virtual space where students can, you know, come in and ask questions. And now we have a few services at various locations. We have admissions, advising, testing, and financial aid at the colleges by appointment. So students make an appointment. We make sure that we call the student prior to their appointment to make sure that they bring the documentation that they need in order for us to assist them. And sometimes after they after we call the student to let them know, okay, this is what we need, they send us the documentation and you know they don't need to come in person after all. But we're making sure the students, you know, have multiple opportunities to connect with us. It's very hard to make that connection with students in a virtual space. So we're trying our best to make sure the students feel supported. Um, some students prefer the virtual world. Uh, others prefer to see somebody in person. So uh, we're trying our best to do that. And uh, I, I'm looking at see if I missed anything. <clears throat> I think that concludes my presentation. Are there any questions from the group? <clears throat> Uh, yes, Indra. Uh, Dr. Milagros Varas is asking uh, if you get any upload from the IT department, uh, what you design and require. Although she's also saying that's an excellent student homepage. So, if, if, thank you. So, the upload for applications, the upload for uh, for Prospective students. Activate the microphone so Milagros Yeah, I just I just uh, activate the microphones, Dr. Mila uh, Baras, if you want to talk or prefer to write on the chat. I think she asked for the upload for the documents. Mm -hmm. No, I'm asking about, hi, good afternoon, everybody. I'm asking about the upload for, I want to know how much help do you get from your IT department when you're designing, especially your student homepage, which, which was excellent. How much of the design is you all in a committee, and then what you design gets uploaded technically? I mean, the IT gets to input that. So it, about how, it, much, how much help do you get from the IT department? Because that's a problem we have in Puerto Rico. <laughs> so it, it's, a, it's an excellent question. So our IT department has been very supportive throughout the process. Um, the design of the student homepage, um, if I go back to that, oops, this one, the, the icons of this homepage, it was designed by communications. And then IT told us how big or how, you know, what format we needed to provide to them. It was not a decision that was made alone. So it was a group decision that was looking at the pictures, what made sense for the students. So that, you know, was a collaborative effort. But IT has been very supportive. And it was a, a chancellor's directive that we needed to improve the admissions and onboarding process. So we were very fortunate to have the support of admission of, of IT. Because without IT, we couldn't be where we are today. Thank you very much. That was very helpful. Thank you. I also have a question, Indra. Let me activate the camera. Hold on for a second. Yeah, I don't want to. I tried to put a mute so we don't have the feedback, you know, the feedback. Uh, but and everybody's have the microphone. Do you have any any? It's, it's super interesting what you just presented. Thank you so much. And you know, I'm just wondering what have been the the feedback of the students because you launched this before COVID, and I guess that after COVID, then they definitely see the value how how the students have that 
that you have received any feedback from them? I have. I we had a yes, ma'am. We um, that's an excellent question. We also had a student representative as part of the mm -hmm. readmissions redesign project. And in any project that I embark, um, I always try to have somebody from the student, um, you know, student council or one of the students that I had contact with in the past. I want to make sure that we get feedback. So the feedback that we um, that was most positive came from international students because they mm -hmm. had the opportunity to upload all their documents and apply in one space. So we received direct let, you know, feedback, you know, that this was a very much improved uh, process for them. Our continuing education students, I didn't receive much feedback, but we did reduce the duplicate student issue rec you know, because before we had uh -huh. so many duplicate records. So since yeah. the launch of this admissions application, we've reduced our duplicates by 80%. It's not a yeah. perfect world, but we, you know, we still see duplicates because students um, sometimes I mean, apply, submit one admissions application and they forget about it and then they'll submit another one. They yeah. transpose their um, date of birth or they, you know, they were previously married and now they're single. So mm -hmm. we still have that and we, you know, we have a business analyst that looks at the incoming applications and if they see something that is closely matching, we connect mm -hmm. with that student and say, have you ever applied? This looks like, you know, you applied before. So try to clean it up before they proceed with enrollment. Excellent. And then for semester Super. credit, um, the students love the videos. Uh, the, the students absolutely love the videos and they're the ones that give those ideas like, have you thought about making this video? So all the videos mm -hmm. that we made are based on the feedback that we receive from our students. Excellent. And a final question. I just stopped sharing the, the presentation. So we can see you better. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. And by the way, talking about the presentation, is this possible to receive like a PDF uh, so we can share not only the video, also yeah, the course. presentation as a reference? Because it's super neat. I love the, the background and, and the way that you uh, presented uh, very easily and visual. And so others can take uh, some ideas from what you have proved that have been working for you in Houston mm -hmm. Community College that you serve more than how many you said students? More than it's, over 100, 000, 000. it's over 100,000 students yearly oh, from wow. the different career really? types. So we have semester credit, continuing ed, adult ed, and you know, so it's right. over 100,000 students. And I cannot oh, say wow. I'm only serving semester credit students. I'm mm -hmm. going to be very cognizant about the support that we provide to the different and mid types. So we're always working mm -hmm. and refining. You know, you find mm -hmm. processes that you thought were going to be perfect, and then you learn, no, this is, needs a little bit of refinement. So it's a continuous yeah. improvement plan that we have and that we, you know, stop and analyze, and then this is not mm -hmm. working, or we need to readjust COVID 19 game, and it yeah. really made us change a lot. <laughs> No, but at least you have something in place because some institutions have, have haven't had anything, you know, that as comprehensive as, as what you were explaining because some of them have some, but not, you know, with the whole uh, variety of services that you can provide in just one platform. So it's awesome. I'm so happy. And I know that you were supposed to come to share this presentation at the Best Practices Showcase that we have in February. But yes. then the COVID and then the earthquake and all the things that happened, you couldn't. So we are so glad that you were able uh, to share in this and it's, it's, it's recorded. So we can definitely share that so others can also learn from your excellent experience. Any other questions? Uh, we still have time either in the chat or uh, you can also activate the, yeah, the we, have, we have Dr. Uh, Graciela Tessan. Hello, um, hi, I'm Dr. Graciela Tuzan. I have a question regarding how uh, the administration took this, like the, the people doing the process of admissions. I see that obviously this was a very necessary uh, change for students to find it, uh, to find the system or the process clearer. But um, what was the reception of all these changes in uh, people that were processing this? Uh, these new applications and with the system? Were they extremely happy or um, 
how did you get them on board to this new process? Excellent question. So we had um, a team and the front line uh, was in, included in this decision making process. So we had we started with over a hundred people uh, on on the big group, and after you know after we were given the task from the chancellor's office, we you know we said this is the purpose of this registration redesign task force. We need people that are interested in helping us redesign this, and. We receive volunteers uh, based on, on the email that the chancellor sent. From there, you know, we divided ourselves into smaller groups in order to complete the work. And they were very receptive because they wanted to help the students. It was something to, you know, we told them, this is gonna help us achieve uh, greater results for Houston Community College. If we have a higher enrollment rate, that means, you know, we are, we're healthy in, in the enrollment, we're helping students, we're changing lives. So I, it, I was fortunate. Um, and it, it's something that we didn't design from the district office. They helped us design because we created process maps and we saw the where the pain points were. And we didn't identify the pain points as, as their fault because it's not their fault that the system was not working how it should have been working. So we didn't give them, you know, we didn't say it's your fault, it's not working. It's like, okay, this is where we see the pain points. How can we fix it? And then together we work, even faculty were, you know, part of the process. They helped us uh, re redesign the wording of, of the admissions letters. So in English uh, faculty were part of it. Different faculty members were excited about it because they, they want to make sure that our students are getting onboarded because we lose a lot of students just at the onboarding process. So we don't want to lose the students. We want to make sure that they get in. And once they get in, you know, of course, we have other support systems so that they can stay and complete their certificates or associate's degree and then transfer to a four year institution or go into the workforce. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Great. I see your son, Indra, in the background. I'm <laughs> sorry, you. my work, and my co workers. <laughs> That's the new reality of everyone. <laughs> so, <don't be> ready. <laughs> so funny. Uh, anyway, uh, any other questions? We still have more than 40 people connected, so this is a time. A uh, perfect timing for any other questions. Uh, it could be in Spanish because Indra speaks Just perfect Spanish. Go ahead. Well, if nobody else. Has a question. I do have another question. Yeah. Yes, I'm. I'm here. Yes. Go ahead. Please okay. Say your name. So, yes. Uh, it's, it's again me, uh, Graciela Tesan. Um, okay. Ah, Graciela. Sorry. <laughs> nobody else is asking questions. I'll, I'll take the opportunity. What kind of videos did you? I, I know that uh, you are saying that you build this. Uh, you are still building the the videos, but which one was the first one that you thought that you that students had to have in order to easy this process? So the first one it was uh, the overview of the new student homepage. So um, I was very fortunate that one of the employees from the previous um, Houston Community College location where I was working. Um, had to, you know, come down to a part-time position, and he's very talented, and so he worked with the enrollment process. So I, I said, what do you think is the best video to go with? And based, because this was a totally new way of navigating the system, we created the overview of the student homepage. The next video was um, the checklist items, because we wanted to make sure that students knew what they needed to complete in order to enroll for classes. The third video, I can't remember. Um, but we have 10, <laughs> but those well, were the first two videos. The, and I think that that is actually very, uh, that, that was an excellent video to start because something that I noticed with my uh, first um, fr freshman is that if they are coming from high school or even the ones that uh, are in uh, adult education, the university environment is so different. So as we get a couple of years working, you go, okay, I know how to navigate this. And we forget how complex the system is 
and uh, we forget that probably they are used to either reading Facebook or uh, video games websites. And now they have to navigate this very complex system that uh, has, and I see that even though it's extremely streamlined, it's easy, an easy interface to have how many tabs in that screen. So this yeah. is a lot of information for them to, to track. And this is not necessary information that they know they have to do it. Mm -hmm. So I think that, yes, definitely it's a, it's a very good start, uh, exactly how to navigate that uh, complex. I think the third one was payment, how to pay if they were not financial aid students, if I recall oh. correctly, but a lot of things have happened since then. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay, thank you. Yes. And in, the same, in that same topic, Indra, did you have a, some kind of student representation in the team? Yes. Yes. Did, yeah, because I guess having their perspective is more easily to see how they think about yeah, these new yeah. things. So, right. Yeah, I can't come up with what they need. Um, I mean, there are some points that I have identified, but it's really good to know from them like this is what we're looking for this is what we need and so we try to accommodate the needs of the students great excellent so any other questions yes i want we to see the videos? the videos okay but you okay. have to share hold on a you second can share the screen you open it in the screen first and then share the screen as you already know how to so in the meantime, Indra is looking for the video. Uh, any other question? Remember that next week we have on Thursday a webinar at 3 p.m. Hora de Puerto Rico because this one is in Spanish. So it's Hora de Puerto Rico. Uh, and then uh, in, on Friday at las 10, Hora de Puerto Rico, for students. We have topics, you just need to register to receive the link. And remember to request the certificate because as soon as we finish this webinar, the chat uh, is erased. So we need you to send us an email to request the certificate and will be sent uh, in the next two weeks. Are you able to see my screen? You probably still see the discussion topics. Ah, uh, no, 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 you just, uh -huh. yeah. And, and see the discussion topics, yeah. Remember, if, if oh, the video is. has audio, you have to check in the bottom, in the bottom, before you share, you have to click that says share the audio. Okay, hold on, share files. And, and then when you open the file, you will see, ask you if you want to share. It's like a box that you have to check if you want to share the audio. In the bottom on the left. I got it. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. It's first time I'm using uh, Blackboard <laughs> Collaborate, so I need a tutorial myself. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Not that difficult. So, okay. Ahead. So these are all the tutorials that we have created. Oh, we created how to drop a class. So, mm -hmm. and we recently created the how to apply uh, using. The Apply Texas application. So this is the overall navigation. This Welcome is the to the new first one. Improve students. In this short video, we will be doing an overview of the new student homepage at Houston Community College. After inputting your login information and signing into your student account, the new and improved student homepage will appear with a set of user-friendly tiles. Starting at the top left-hand side of the screen, we have the checklist tile. Accessing this tile will allow you to view the HCC policy checklist. On Super board. nice. It's like a tutorial. How, how long is it? Many minutes. Uh, student holes. Hold on, let me see. The new student homepage. The second user-friendly tile on the top is five minutes. I don't know if we have center. five minutes. It's super nice because when now. students struggling with the language, it's super nice that you put captions. Mm -hmm. So because not everyone is a mode you of know. communication. Yeah. So I sent the, the link uh, to the group uh, or to you to somebody. 
Um, because I know this session ends at 3 p.m. Unless you all want to see it, I'll, I'm happy to put it back on. I just shared the the link on on the general chat so everyone has a, is able to to see it there. Okay. So do you want do you want to continue viewing it or would you like me to stop? Is that is that the tutorials are open to everyone in your website? Yes. Yes, it's open. It's uh, it's on the main page, one of the main pages for HCC. So ah, okay, the the link that Jelixa shared in the yes. chat. Ah, okay, they hit the chat. They had the the chat already. No, it's okay because we well, I think that they, I guess that the person wants to have like an overview, but super nice. Uh, that that you sh were able to share this. Any other questions? Since we are almost. We like to be uh, very strict with the time because we know that everybody have easy agendas and also it's a long, it's a weekend, it's Friday. <laughs> Any other questions? No, no. As you can see the chat. I don't know if you can see the chat, uh, Indra, but everybody saying everything was excellent. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Eileen, always for your feedback. And yes, it's a Friday. Thank God it's Friday, and um, because this week have been very intense, not only because of work, but, but because of the elections that's still going on and on and on, <laughs> especially, uh, you know, in Puerto Rico and also in the states. So. Uh, so thank you so much for taking out of your busy agendas to be here with us and with Indra. Indra, I'm so happy that you finally made this presentation. That was one of the highest scores when we when you submitted for the evaluation, Bella, evaluation committee for the best practices showcase. So finally, we were able to have you. And we hope that next time it could be face to face and you can come back to Puerto Rico. And um, please, uh, Thank you to everyone. Uh, we will be sending reminders of the, by the way, of the webinar and also of the best practices showcase because the call for proposal for the next one is uh, already sent. Uh, it will be virtual on February, but we need you if you are interested in sharing your Bella initiative like Indra did with this one. Uh, please uh, be thinking what you want to present so you can send uh, your proposal. It will be every all of you will be receiving this invitation as well. So thank you so much, Delixa. Anything else that you may want to add? Also the journal, right? The journal will be publishing will be published uh, by the week of November 16. So expect that as well. Uh, I have excellent articles, more than 10, right, Jelixa? How many we have? Already? Yes. Yes, 10. Uh, and 10 that were reviewed by, by the editorial board, and the topics are very uh, pertinent for this new uh, academic scenario. So we hope that you can benefit from this as well. So thank you, Indra. Take care. Be well. Say hi to your kids, beautiful kids. <laughs> And thank you for your time and valuable collaboration. We always appreciate. And thank you so much to everyone for your time. Have a wonderful day. Take care. And weekend. Thank and you. And safe. I'll send you the presentation. Muchas gracias. <laughs>